Welcome, Great Twelves. Yes, you are with Ashraf Patel. And what are we looking at today? Today we're looking at a bank reconciliation statement. Now, obviously, you've done lots of bank reconciliations in Grade 11. What we're going to do today, we're going to focus on key concepts just to revise and go through the section again in order to ensure that you are ready to answer any type of questions that you may find in your examination paper. So now, if we look at the basic concept behind a bank reconciliation statement, I'm going to start off by showing you two very basic and simple transactions. Number one, if we deposit 10,000 Rand into the bank account, right? Let us look at these entries from the perspective of our business. We are the business of Be Smart, okay? Because we are smart kids, aren't we? Obviously, that's why we call our business Be Smart. And we're going to look at it with respect to the bank, in the books of the bank. Okay, now watch this. When we deposit 10,000 Rand into our bank account, in our books, we have a bank account, and in our books, it's 10,000 Rand in our bank account. It's an asset increasing in value, therefore debited. But look at it, change your perspective now. You no longer be smart. Yes, you're still smart, but you are now the bank. And in the books of the bank, they have an account for be smart. Watch. They are crediting the account of be smart. Who's they? The bank. So, if I look at coming back, let's jump now. We are be smart. What do we say? We say we have 10,000 Rand in our bank account, and therefore the bank owes us 10,000 Rand. When we go to the books of the bank, the bank will say, we are owing money to be smart. Yes, it's our money. We've deposited that money into the bank account. The bank will say, we are owing money to be smart, and therefore it will show as a credit balance. Do you understand this relationship between you and your bank account? Okay, let's take another example. If we paid 2,000 Rand by check, in our account, what are we saying? Credit the bank account, our books. We credit our bank account, why? Because our bank account is an asset account decreasing in value, therefore credited. At the same time, let's change the perspective. What does the bank say? The bank says that B Smart's account must be decreased by 2,000 Rand because they use the 2,000 Rand. Watch, the entry is on the debit side. So, in other words, if you're looking at the two, if you're looking at the transaction from two perspectives, in our books, whatever we're debiting will be credited in the books of the bank. And by the same token, whatever we credit in our books will be debited in the books of the bank. So, what conclusion do we come to? The bank account in the books of the business increases on the debit side. And the bank records, the entry on the credit side of the business's bank statement as an increase. Therefore, the bank statement increases on the credit side. So when you receive your bank statement, what would you like to see? A debit or a credit balance? Remember, I rephrase the question. When you're receiving your bank statement, what type of balance would you love to see? Obviously, guys, a credit balance indicating what? That the bank owes you money and therefore it shows a credit balance on your bank 
statement. So, accounting boffins, look at the relationship between you and your bank. By the same token, any payments by check decreases on the credit side. Where? In our books. But in the books of the bank, you will find that the bank records the entry on the debit side. Therefore, the bank statement decreases on the debit side. Clear? It should be crystal clear. It should be crystal clear to you. The relationship between you and your bank. Now, having done that, we move on and we look at key concepts. Now, you've done the comparison of what? You've compared your cash receipts journal, right? And obviously, you've compared it with the credit side of your bank statement. And now you find that there are certain items that you need to update. Okay, before we go there, when you're doing a bank reconciliation statement, remember, there are primarily two types of differences. One we refer to as timing differences. That means these differences occur or result as a result of time, timing differences. Clear? And the second type of difference that arises between us and our bank is as a result of bank account adjustments. Let me illustrate by means of an example. When the bank pays you interest on your current account, remember, when you have a favorable bank balance, the bank is going to pay you. You're going to be receiving interest. And therefore, that interest will be recorded in your cash receipts journal. Now, the bank has already entered the interest in the bank statement. And therefore, you now need to update your records, our records. What are we going to update? Our cash receipts journal. And what do we do? We enter it into the cash receipts journal, interest on current account. Other examples of items that you need to enter would include direct deposits that are appearing on your bank statement, okay? And uh, we often use this example. You've got some buildings uh, that you've acquired in a place called Vladivostok, and certainly I'm not swearing, if you check and if you talk to your geography counterparts, they will tell you that such a place indeed exists. Now, in order for you to receive your rental, are you going to wait for that check to be posted to you? If it gets to you, you're very lucky. So what happens? The tenant deposits directly into your bank account in Vladivostok. That amount is reflected in your bank statement, but not in your cash receipts journal. You therefore update your journal. By the same token, you have internet deposits, right? A very important one, a stale check. I'm going to give you a minute to ponder over this stale check. Tell me what is a stale check. Go for it.
Okay, guys, what's the answer? Yes, if a check is older than six months, it means that this check is now stale. It means that you cannot transact with this check anymore because it, is, it, has, it has reached the period which we normally give for a check to be cashed. And within six months, if that check is not cashed, it now becomes a stale check. Got it? Brilliant. Accounting stars. Right. Another item would be amounts that are overstated in my CPJ. You've made an error in your CPJ, the amount was overstated, you would correct this amount in your cash receipts journal, you would look at a cancel or a check in order to cancel a check that is lost. Yes, it happens that checks that are lost in transit somewhere, this check needs to be cancelled and be careful with this check that we are cancelling. Why? Because one, you cancel in your CRJ, step number one. Step number two, you issue a new check where? In your cash payments journal. And yes, the third step, a very important step, this new check that you are now issuing would also be entered into your bank reconciliation statement as an outstanding check. Okay, guys, you got a minute now to tell me what will you enter in your cash payments journal. Go for it. Start recording possible transactions for your CPJ. Okay, guys, let's look at your list. What items do you have? Have you recorded bank charges? Now, obviously, bank charges is the, is the umbrella account. Within bank charges, you get specific charges like what? Service fees, checkbook charges, debit, uh, levy on debit transactions, credit card costs. All of these would form part of bank charges. Understand, you will not open up separate accounts for these specific items. Neither will you call it service charges. The name of the account is bank charges. Please guys, important. Right? Now, question again. Why is interest on overdraft shown as a separate item? Remember, We've done this, but reminder is beneficial to accounting students. Interest in overdraft, yes, it's a charge levied by the bank. However, it is an item because of its material importance, because it is not an operating expense, but a financing expense. It needs to be shown separately. Therefore, you will record interest and overdraft as a separate item in your cash payments journal, right? And also, keep this in mind that when you are drawing up your income statement, you always show interest at the bottom of your income statement, not as part, as, as part of your operating expenses. Reason, we've said, it is not an operating expense, but a financing expense. Clear, guys? Great. Okay, what else would we have here? Remember your RD checks, 
checks that are unpaid, checks that go hoppity hop because they bounce, obviously, for whatever reason. Your stop orders and your debit orders, that means the bank has knowledge of these transactions. It is, it's appearing on your bank statement. It's not appearing in your cash payments journal. And therefore, you are now going to record these transactions in your bank, in your cash payments journal. They are in your bank statement. You're going to record them in your cash payments journal. And obviously, internet payments, payments that we have made, and therefore, they are reflective. We must now enter them into our cash Payments journal, also amounts understated in the CPJ, right? And remember the loss check that we spoke about. Okay, guys, time for a break. Don't you stray or go away because we'll be back in a whisker. See you just now. Welcome back, accounting boffins. Yes, we've dealt with the cash receipts journal. We've dealt with the cash payments journal. That means you've updated your CRJ. You've updated your CPJ, right? Now, you come to the stage where you've done your bank account, okay? Now, just remember, if you look at your format of your bank account, in your bank account, you've got your balance at the beginning, either a debit or a credit balance. You've brought in your sundry accounts, also called total receipts, you've brought in your sundry accounts, also called your total payments, you've then balanced your bank account, and you've got your new balance that you've brought down. So in other words, you can see that your bank account is totally dependent on your cash receipts journal and your cash payments journal. It's information that you've updated the CRJ, you've updated your CPJ, you've posted to the bank account, and now you have the latest bank account as it appears with the adjustments, with the bank account adjustments. Ring a bell? It should. What did we say? That the differences between our, our records and the records of the bank, one of the reasons, one of the categories would be bank account adjustments. Okay, now you start off with your bank reconciliation statement. And I promise you guys, if you understand the, the following concept of a bank reconciliation statement, then definitely the battle is won. And what is that? Your bank reconciliation statement, please guys, have your wits about you. Listen carefully. Your bank reconciliation statement is an extension of your bank statement. Let me repeat that. Your bank reconciliation statement is an extension of your bank statement. What do we mean by that? By that I mean where your bank statement stops. If you need to extend, you extend from that point, isn't it? You have a room. If you want to extend the room in a particular direction, where the room wall ends, from there you start extending. So guys, your bank reconciliation statement is an extension of your bank statement. So start off where your bank statement ended. Ring a bell, closing balance as your bank statement. That's the starting point of your bank reconciliation statement. Clear? Make sense when I say it's an extension? You can see why. You, where you ended your bank statement, that's where you continue from. Okay. Then you bring in your deposits not yet credited by the bank. What are we talking about? We are talking about a timing difference. Timing difference, yes. As a result of time, you've received your bank statement on the 22nd or 23rd of the month already. Any transactions that you've entered post 
the 22nd and 23rd, definitely will not appear on your bank on your bank statement because the bank statement is in your possession already. Therefore, guys, enter it now. You've got that information. You've made your comparison with your CRJ, CPJ, and your bank statement, and you find out that there's a deposit that you have made not appearing in the books of the bank, namely the bank statement. Therefore, enter into your bank reconciliation statement. And guys, remember, grade 12s, I'm addressing you specifically, but yes, if there are any grade 11s out there, this is beneficial to you as well because you do the section in grade 11, okay? So the place to be here is with us because we benefit you. Then you have checks that have been issued, drawn, that are not yet presented for payment. In other words, you've issued the check. You've entered into your cash payments journal. How does the bank know that the check has been issued? Only when that check is presented for payment. So therefore, if you've given the check to Miss Cheese and she doesn't need the money at this point, then surely she's not going to deposit the check. And as a result, there's going to be a difference between your bank account and the bank statement, how do you update it? By entering the information into your bank reconciliation statement as what item? Checks that have been not, that have been drawn but not presented for payment. Done and dusted. Corrections of errors of deposits wrongly credited. Yes, instances where you find on your bank statement that your bank statement has been credited, but obviously that information relates to another business, somebody else. It's not your money. You can't use it. You need to make the bank aware and you need to correct it in your bank reconciliation statement. So clearly you're starting to get a vibe here that everything where you are, where your records are in order, but you're getting information from the bank where the bank has made an error, that will be corrected in your bank reconciliation statement. By the same token, you find errors where your account was wrongly debited. Can you think of one? You got a minute, go for it. Got it, guys? Have you identified what item would you use here to explain this here? Let's see if you got it. One, it's possible that somebody else's check was drawn and debited against your account, right? It's possible. Two, there may have been a duplication of bank charges. Yes, today you these types of errors are common. So obviously, what has the bank done? Let's take the one where the, the bank charge has been duplicated. Your account has been wrongly debited by a duplication of a bank charge. And as a result of that, you will now have to correct that error in your bank reconciliation statement. Okay, you remember we spoke about 
this closing balance in your bank account that we calculated. Now is the time to bring it in. Your closing balance according to your bank account. That's the one. And by you slotting in this bank account balance, you will find that your bank reconciliation statement is now in balance. Right, you have exactly one minute, not a second more. Draft a bank reconciliation statement for me, taking into consideration all the items that we have discussed. Go for it. Okay, guys, let's see. What do you have? Does your bank reconciliation statement look like this here? Does it? Remember we said you start off with your balance as per your bank statement. Voila. You bring in outstanding deposits, credit outstanding deposits. That means this deposit we have made, the bank has no information regarding that deposit. Debit your outstanding checks. There we go. Right? You have debit a deposit wrongly credited, errors made by the bank. Okay? You have a check that was wrongly debited, another error made by the bank. And then you've got your debit balance as per your bank account. Watch this, guys. Watch what happens. Can you see that your bank reconciliation statement is in balance? Yes, another great feeling. When your bank reconciliation statement works out, it's a brilliant feeling. 10 out of 10 times, I would say. It, it surely means that you know what's happening with regards to bank reconciliation statements. Right, now, Let's go into the real thing, the question. We've done an explanation for you. It says here that you are provided with information from the bank reconciliation statement of Petudi traders and the business banks with Top Bank. The first question says, why is it important for a business to prepare a monthly bank reconciliation statement? Provide Two points. All right, you've got one minute. Go for it.
Okay, guys, what are the reasons? Number one, for internal control purposes. Remember, to identify the correct bank balance. Right? Now, you will notice that we're giving you quite a few alternatives. The question said any two points, but we're discussing it so you see the reason behind drawing up a monthly bank reconciliation statement. Deposits made and checks issued not only affect the business, but also the bank concerned. We have to keep a record of our cash transactions. Now, this one here is, on, is one that I want to highlight. The books of the business and that of the bank should agree. And the bank balance should be the same in both books. So as part of internal control, remember, what's the purpose of internal control? The purpose of internal control is to safeguard the assets of a business. And therefore, which asset are we safeguarding here? Certainly, our asset bank, right? We also say that the comparisons are done on a monthly basis so that we can identify errors. And if there's any dishonesty, this can also be detected at an early stage. So obviously you can see the need for drawing up the bank reconciliation statement on a monthly basis. Break time once again, guys. Wait for the bell and then back to your accounting class. Welcome, guys, back to your accounting class. Yes, you had a short break. And the question says that you, one of the checks not presented to the bank has been treated incorrectly. Which check is it? And explain your choice. Indicate the correct cause of action to be taken. Right, let's check it out. It says here that of your outstanding checks, you've got three outstanding checks, number 2461, number 2461, number 2719, and number 2874. Right. Look specifically at number 2461. What do you notice about 2461? Let's go for it. It says, one of the checks not presented. So, let's see what we have here. Okay, nevertheless, let's go back into the question and let's look at this one here in particular. Watch. It's dated the 12th of February. It's dated the 12th of February, indicating to you that you are now working in August. Ring a bell? Something that we alluded to earlier on? Certainly, it has now become a stale check, meaning that the check is older than six months, yes, and it is not supposed to be in your bank reconciliation statement. Why not? Because a stale check needs to be cancelled. That's right. And where are you going to cancel it? Because it said there, what is the correct action that we're going to be taking? The correct action that we're going to be taking here is that there you see it. It's a stale check. It's older than six months, right? We've discussed that. And the correct cause of action, what are we going to do? It must be cancelled in your cash receipts journal. Clear? So immediately you see, when you're looking for, when you're working with a bank recon, check the dates. Dates are important in your life, aren't they? I'm sure they are. So watch out for dates. Okay. Next question. 
The next question says, you are provided with the information. Again, we're looking at the bank reconciliation statement. Here goes, right? And we are now expected to calculate this correct bank balance, right? Again, you're going to take these two items into account in order to calculate the correct bank account balance. Watch. If you say debit and credit, and let's start off by saying bank overdraft is per bank statement overdraft. Remember what we said? If it is an overdraft, it's a debit balance as per bank statement, 25260. So therefore we say debit 25260, right? Next item. So we've dealt with this one here. Outstanding deposit. What do we do? How do we deal with our outstanding deposits? We say credit outstanding deposits, 12390. So 12390 is my credit outstanding deposit, right? Coming back to my outstanding checks. Do I take this one into consideration? No. Why not? Because it is now you've done the corrective action. You've canceled the check in your CRJ. And therefore, this item no longer features in your bank reconciliation statement. Yes, these two outstanding checks need to be taken into consideration. And if you add them, they should give you a total of 6,300. 6, therefore, you will say debit outstanding checks, 6,300, right? And what do we do now? We take our calculator and we say, fine, let's add 25,260 plus 6,300 will be equal to 31560, 31560 minus 12,930. And this will give you a figure of 18. Did we add correctly? Let me just check this one out again. It's 25,260. Let's just identify the amounts if they are correct. 25,260. And we've got that one. And the other one was the outstanding checks. It was 6,000. Where, where we, where we have them here. That's 38. That's 5,000. 8, 6,300. That's correct. Okay. So you've got your... Let's take our calculator again, and we say 25,260 plus your 6,300 to give you a figure of 31,560 minus your outstanding deposit. Let's check if that figure was right. 12,390. 12,390 is correct. Okay, therefore, you find your missing figure by saying is equal to, oh, we got some error there. Let's go again. 25260 plus 6,300 minus 12,390. And your answer is 19,170. Voila. You've corrected and calculated the correct bank balance. See that you use your information in order to correct the, firstly, take out the stale check and then calculate the closing bank balance. Okay, let's go on. The next question says, explain how check number 2719 should be treated when preparing financial statements as at the 31st of August 2015, and explain a reason for this treatment. Right, let's first identify check number 2719. 2719, here goes. What is, what is unique about 2719? 
Notice that we are working in August, and this is dated the 19th of September. Aha, important question. The question once again says, explain how. We're going to treat 2719. Watch what we do. You're going to decrease your bank overdraft and increase your creditors by an amount of 2,500. Why do you do this? Let me explain. 2719 is a post dated check that we have issued. Under no circumstances can that check be presented for payment. Why? Because it is post-dated. It is dated for a, a date later than the current date. So in reality, have you actually paid that amount to your creditor? And your answer is an emphatic no. No, we have not paid this amount to our creditors. Now, with regards to your financial statements, right? With regards to your financial statements, obviously, when you are drawing up your balance sheet, you are, you are stating your financial position at that date. Now, watch. This money has not actually left your bank account. And therefore, we say, add it back to bank. But because your bank is in overdraft, you will say, decrease your bank overdraft. Let me explain. Because your bank is in overdraft, by you adding it back to your bank, this 2,500, what are you in fact doing? You are decreasing your bank overdraft. And at the same time, you got to go in, increase your creditors because really, you haven't paid your creditors. And therefore, because you haven't paid your creditors, you've got to increase your creditors by 2,500. Okay? What's the reason? The reason, grade 12s, is simple. The funds have not been lost to the business. The money has not left our bank account. The amount is still owed to the creditors. Guys, this is very important, and it's something that you must please understand. Okay, dokes, let's move on. Next question says, explain why a post-dated check received by Patudi traders on the 20th of August, but dated the 20th of September, does not appear in the bank reconciliation statement. Now watch. This is a post-dated check that we have received. Right? You got a minute to consider your answer. Go for it. Welcome back, grade 12s. Yes, let's look at this. Let's look at your responses. Remember that this is a post data check that we have received. One, important, post data checks that we receive are entered into a post data check 
register. Aha, important information. Two, post-dated checks, commonly known as PDCs, are only deposited on the day that they are due. Important. This check is not negotiable until the due date. That means it's useless, and that is why. When you receive a post-dated check, you will not even issue a receipt to acknowledge because no transaction has taken place. Uh-huh, important? Certainly it is. And then the rule of prudence. Yes, remember, in terms of your accounting concepts and also in terms of international financial reporting standards, IFRS, in this case here, the rule of prudence, do not record until certain. It means we cannot record this transaction until we are 100% sure that the funds are actually in our account. And that only happens on the due date. Well, guys, we've done a lot on bank recon today. If we have to summarize, we've looked at entries in your cash receipts journal, You've looked at entries in your cash payments journal. You've also looked at drawing up your bank reconciliation statement. And remember the word reconciliation, to bring together, to reconcile. Sometimes you have differences with your buddies and you have to make up, yes, reconcile, bring together. Bring together what? We have to bring together the bank balance as it appears in our records with the bank statement balance that we are receiving from the bank and to reconcile those two figures. Well, guys, that's the bell, the end of your accounting lesson. Time to play. But in accounting, you play for my team. Ashraf's accounting superstars. Enjoy the game. Until next time, be good. Bye-bye.